Welcome, everybody. You know, why, why did Afghanistan fall the way it did? People left behind and uh, the, if you put your mindset to that, what is happening in that country and to those people who now have lost all protection that lived there under oppression, why did this fail? Why do we have such a disaster? And you can't blame any one president. I mean, you can on the withdrawal stuff, but you can't blame any one president. We ran in with a mission to nation build. And the leadership has changed every four years or so. The doctrines have changed. And therefore, in the end, we lost hold of what the mission really was. What was the mission? And that's part of the problem. The problem is this. This is what the United Nations mission is. A stable and prosperous Afghanistan that lives with peace in itself and its neighbors, where the Afghan people's rights, human rights, are upheld and basic services are available to all. Here's the key. Promoting inclusion, supporting gender-sensitive peace building, and the basic rules of law. What is the problem with these? It's everything that probably, in a sense, we want, but they were trying to impose it. You cannot enforce your will on somebody else. It is basically mission impossible. This is where Christians really have a hold over what is the right way to do things. You see, the change of Christianity comes from the inside out. But we have the same problem in the church that we have here with our mission in the world. The thing is, the church mission has totally changed. It has become a statement similar to what the United Nation has here. Yes, we want social justice, and I don't like that word because it's misused, but social equity, where people share things in a right manner. We want rights for all. We want the same things, but the manner and method is totally different. Unfortunately, our church needs a great reset. The Christian, the real Christian church needs a reset. It is not the mission of the church to go into the world and tell people how to live. It is not to go into the world and ensure social justice. It is to do this in Mark 16, 15. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And notice the word that God put in the Bible here. Every creature. There is no excuse for ever having slavery. That was totally wrong in this country. And if people would have spoke up or really heeded the Bible, they would have preached the gospel to every creature. And why I say that is because when evolution came into the world, it said to the world that we evolved from apes. And thus evolving from apes, there are different grades of individuals. God put this in here before that evolution came to say, if a person can think and speak with anything can think and speak, you give him a gospel. I don't think there's aliens, but if an alien came, you would give him the gospel. That was the mission. The second part of the mission, I'm going to read it from Matthew. All right. Jesus says, all power is given unto me from heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. 
And I, lo, I am with you even to the end of the world. Jesus is present in his church, but his church refuses the mission. I've been praying earnestly for a great awakening, and this morning when I got up to do my normal study, God directed me to this. We have to get back to our mission, to our mission statement. We don't have a change of leadership. We have one Lord and one God. We are personally accountable to go out, to go into all of the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Here's the first step. Let us repent before God and ask God, what should we be doing? Where would you have me go out and give the word of God? I had a, a person in our church raise their hand the other day and he was asking, you know, what can I do? And that's the struggle we all have. But we all have the ability to go before our creator, before Jesus Christ through the Father and say, Father, what is it that I can do? I don't care how old you are or how young. Maybe it's pray. But we need a great reset in our church because we need a new mission statement, not this one that we have picked up from the world, social justice, uh, CRT, uh, you know, inclusion. All of that comes from the inside out. We need to go out and preach the gospel to everyone in this world. We cannot, we cannot fall for the trickery that has been put on us with social justice and all of these social programs that are nothing but a garbage heap of, in, of stuff because it's never going to amount to anything because as you press other people and put your morality on them, it is like a pressure cooker that's going to burst. I don't know if you ever had a pressure cooker. You cook rice in it or something. You have to remember to release the pressure that it's under so you don't get burnt when you open it up. You have to release it first. God, Jesus, cooks from the inside out. It's a matter of choice. He's not saying you force people into Christianity like some churches did during the Crusades and other areas. No. It is a choice of the heart to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart and be saved and be baptized and become a child of God and change from the inside out. Then your mission statement goes like this. Go ye into all of the world and tell the gospel of Jesus Christ, baptizing them and teaching them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is the mission. A good soldier does not get sidetracked off of this mission into something else. Now, you might say, well, I just don't know what to do personally. This is why I say to go to Jesus Christ. I want to read something from you from John uh, 21, 17, and a couple of verses here. Uh, Jesus speaking to Peter. This is after Peter denied Jesus three times. He's a failure. And here's where we're going to pick it up. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Jesus asked that question. Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. And then Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Speaking to him individually. Now I want you to see, Go ye into the world is speaking to everybody in the church. There is something everybody can do who is saved and knows Jesus Christ. So he goes on in verse 18. Verily, verily, Jesus speaking, I say unto thee, when thou was young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another will gird thee and carry thee whither wilt thou not go. This he spake, signifying by what debt he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. All right, so what was this? He was telling Peter, you're going to be carried to the cross as I was. You're not going to want to go like I didn't. But you're going to go to the cross. And we know Peter did that. And he says, Lord, 
He prayed, I'm not worthy. And he told the people there, I'm not worthy to die like my Savior. Put me upside down. And they put Peter upside down to be crucified. All right, so now watch what Peter says. Then Peter, turning, see at the disciple whom Jesus loved, following, who also leaned on the breast at supper and said unto the Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? So John is writing this account and he gives this part of his test of the testimony. He's writing about what Peter said. So Peter's asking, if I'm going to die on a cross, what about him? And Jesus said, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Here's the challenge I got. I pray that you would get on your knees and pray and ask God, what is it you would have me to do to follow the Great Commission, to go into all the world and tell people about Jesus? I pray, I've been praying, I want to pray more for not only a revival in our church, but a great awakening. It is time to take back this world don't pray for our nation. Pray for the church that will overcome the world. Let us see a great revival, a great awakening before Jesus Christ returns. I, I ask you to pray with me after you get off these videos and just keep praying and cleaning up our lives that we be a testimony to this world that... We can change people from the inside out when they come to know Jesus. If you're watching this video and you know Jesus, you know what I'm talking about. Arise. Oh, Lord, arise before our eyes. Arise, oh, Lord God, and let's take this great commission out into the world. I hope this is a blessing to you. I hope you take it to heart. So until next time, may Jesus increase as we decrease.